video shots of historic photographs of Frederick Douglass from when he was young to old, and an illustration of New York City's harbor from the 1830s. John T. Reddick, Central Park Conservancy, speaking. Frederick Douglass was born a slave in Maryland, and very few people think of New York as the great port city that it was at the time of Frederick Douglass. And by way of water, that's how he came to New York City as an escaped slave. He was a very articulate abolitionist and really advanced the cause of anti-slavery in the United States as well as being very supportive of women's suffrage. And by the end of his life, he's probably the most famous African-American of his day. Video shots of contemporary Central Park and historic photos of the northwest corner of Central Park. For many years, up until the 1990s, the northwest corner of Central Park was just an intersection. But the community really wanted to see a more formal improvement to that intersection into a traffic circle, and within the circle, a monument that honored Frederick Douglass. Video shots of photographs from the 1990s at the dedication of Frederick Douglass Circle followed by video of photographs of the two artists who worked on the Frederick Douglass Circle Monument. The design for Frederick Douglass came out of an initiative in the 90s for federal funding to do an improvement to the northern end of Central Park. It was a competition by artists to submit the designs, and the winning designer, Algernon Miller, partnered with the artist, Gabrielle Corin, came up with the winning scheme. Contemporary video shots of Frederick Douglass Circle and the Frederick Douglass Statue. The Central Park Conservancy was critical in gathering together all the different parties and be able to present a proposal to the federal government toward this enhancement project. So it really facilitated the broader look at that intersection as a public commemorative spot. And it's become a sort of significant spot in Harlem culture, which is very gratifying. Video shots of John T. Reddick's hands, followed by shots of the Frederick Douglass statue's hands. I've always enjoyed working on the Frederick Douglass Project, and I always encourage people who are involved in civic projects that there's extra reward. And one of the rewards for me is the artist, Gabrielle Corin, was uncomfortable just doing hands. And when she came around to doing Frederick Douglass hands, she made a model of my hands, for which his hands are reflective of mine. So every time I go, I can see how much more I've aged compared to when I did those hands about 20 years ago. Central Park Conservancy.